Praying. Well, you, can't me, have, me, you can't have patience without faith. Yeah, that's exactly you know right. So well, you got to have in, them both. Let me get into a different topic right now. Okay. Um, I know you're into fitness. I am. What drove you into that career? I've always, I in high school, from junior high school all the way to now, I've always been into health and fitness. I, I was in track and field, volleyball, love the sport. Um, of volleyball it, I I really kind of beat myself up about it sometimes because I was like I would have been in the AVPs didn't you she used to you play Lorraine Love oh my god yeah yeah, yeah Lorraine Teresa been on the show love. yeah them loves oh yeah them Hodges them loves and Hodges <laughs> <laughs> them some them some girls my girls is wow you know Lorraine yeah, yeah. Know. Lorraine been on the show absolutely yeah man yeah. So. so you're a personal trainer I'm a person a certified personal trainer wow. in high intensity interval training and resistance training wow. but it's so crazy because then whenever I think about a personal trainer I'm thinking about somebody who's all cut up and you know what I mean yeah. that right. is, everything is all mental right. but still so what would you say about people who think that way it depends on the it depends on who you are, what you're looking to do. I mean, I now that I'm older and I, I'm not afraid of my age, I'm in my fifties. Mm -hmm. And so now that I'm older, you know, being extremely cut and all of that, that's that's the outward look. You know, it's all good. <laughs> I mean, I'm cut. You know, I just got them clothes. <laughs> but the the it, it depends on what you're going to do, what you want to do, you know. But I want women to understand and men to understand, even at my age and our age, that we can be healthy at this age. It ain't all about cut, uh, being cut. It's about what you're putting inside your body, what you're eating, how you eat, and your mental health. So that's what I'm about. I'm about all of that. Fitness and all in health and fitness all go hand in hand. But your mental health as well, you have to take care of that. And training for me is, it, it, it's a mental health, it's, it's like a psychiatrist for me. It's like going to the psychiatrist. It helps me to release stress. It helps me to think and to, you know, be able to do the things that I need to do in our business. That's why I train, I train pretty hard. You know, my workouts are an hour plus sometimes a day. I do spin classes. Uh, I lift a lot of uh, heavy weights as well. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Flipping tires. Yeah. And, you know, people like, you know, I have a master trainer. So I don't, you know, do this by myself. Every trainer has to have another trainer that helps them. And so I just believe in making sure that women understand. I don't care, I don't care what size you are. You can be healthy at that size. Wow. And then you can, you can fulfill the goal that you're looking to fulfill. People think, oh, I've been through this trauma, I've been through all this, I've been through trauma. But health and fitness, I believe for me, helps save me. Let's talk about your business a little bit. You, 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 what, 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 is the, what is the business? The name of the, the company is called Infusion Design okay. Solutions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and Infusion, uh, I actually started in 2008. Okay. Uh, and out of necessity, and it's uh, digital design, marketing, website development, uh, and print media. Okay. And so um, I had you no, know, I didn't go to school for anything. It was out of necessity. And at the time we were dating, uh, I was look. We were looking to do a couture line. Okay. And we needed a website built. And we had a partner. She had uh, the money. And I went to a black-owned web developer here uh, in Dallas. Okay. And I had to sketch out for the website and everything. And I presented it to them. And they came back with the the estimate. And they were worth every penny. They were worth every penny. Like it was like six at that time, six thousand plus. And I said, hey, we can't drop six thousand right now. And they were worth it though. And I literally came home that day and Googled how to build a website. And at that time you could get like the trial Photoshop, trial uh, you know, web development uh, software, and I would stay up hours. 16 hour days just learning how to code. MySpace was big at that time. Mm -hmm. And so I cut, that's how uh, I met Low Deezy. I actually designed his MySpace page. Man, shout out Low Deezy, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's my and, guy. <laughs> and so there was several, you know, that's how I cut my teeth on learning how to code and, and, and uh, style sheets and HTML was learning through MySpace and designing uh, the custom MySpace pages for like local celebrities and rappers and different things like that. 
And so from there, it was my mom who was like, you need to make this into a business. And I was like, no, because I was in corporate America. My wife was in corporate America. I made good money. You know, she made good money. And I wasn't thinking about, you know, What celebrities business. did you do that for? Oh, wow. I did one for Tyra Banks. No. Yes. Shout Tyra out Banks. Tyra Banks. Wow. My, not my crush when I was a little bit younger. Yeah. Before I got married. <laughs> Shout out. I don't, know she ever, I don't know if her and her team ever used it, but yeah, Tyra Banks. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Taj Maori, the TN uh, okay. okay, little brother. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Uh, and a couple of, you know, local artists as well. Okay, and that's so, cool. Yeah. That's yeah. what it's all about, man. Yeah, don't yeah. don't it make you feel good that you that, that you got that history to say, I put that work in. Absolutely. I mean, and that's with God. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and I would tell people, you know, business is not easy. It's not glamorous. I mean, people are putting it out there on, on Facebook and social media like this is a glamorous life. And it's, it's hard a hard, it's, it's hard, hard work. Words. I mean, my wife and I, we work harder, more hours doing business for ourselves than we ever did in corporate America. I mean, and my wife can tell you, like, I'm I'm literally on fumes right now because I was up to like two or three this morning yes. working. He for does our, the same thing every day. Absolutely. For our but clients. Let me ask you this. Uh, well, how, when do you have time to do music? Well, I'll be honest. I had to put music on, on kind of a little bit on the you show. You see what I'm saying? I had, to, I, had, I had to put it on the see, show. I know you told me about the Kirk Franklin and doing yeah. the music with yeah. different people. Yeah. Um, you a very talented brother. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. So I, I, it, it, you know, it's tough, and I'm, I'm starting to get my, my, my feet back wet with that. Yeah. Uh, my thing is more into production and, and songwriting. Um, and so having to work with, with, with these artists, you know, it's time consuming. But... Right now, I understand with business. Bi See, my thing was always about ownership. And if I, I, I want to own it. And I've seen a lot of artists in particular go through the hell and brimstone and the pitfalls of not owning what it is that they put their hands to. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, they're getting fleeced because they don't own it. Like, I, I, we, I look at Anita Baker. As great as she is, as talented as she is, you're talking about a 40-year-old talent in the industry just now getting to the point where she owns her masters. This is Anita Baker. You mean to tell me that most of your whole career, you don't own what you've seen? You don't own what you wrote? Most artists didn't, they only don't. a handful of them exactly. did. So look how backwards that is. Mm -hmm. That another entity higher than us, and I'm talking my white folks, own what it is that we put out. But being a devil advocate, that's not a good <laughs> word to use. <laughs> The white folks provided opportunity a lot of times too when we didn't have it. I, 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 I so agree with that. those doors. I do agree with that. I do agree with that. And they yeah. opened doors that we didn't know of. Correct. We or didn't we know about. And open. that we couldn't. That we couldn't. I, I'll give them that. But the thing of it is, is that if I open a door for you because I want to see you succeed and I genuinely want you to make it, then the deal that we cut is going to benefit you, your and family, correct. and the generation that comes after you. Uh -huh. And them too. And, and me too. But if I'm only thinking about me, and the lion's share comes to me, and I'm abusing your talent, that's where we, that's where we mess right. up. I provided you an opportunity, that's cool. But if I'm abusing your talent to where I make 80% and you take home a measly 20, then there's something wrong with that. And that's what we need to go back and, and, and it's not a black or white thing. We need to go back and say, okay, if I'm doing most of the work, I appreciate you opening the door, but look at who's doing this work. I think a lot of times, just just from the outside looking in, right. I get to say whatever I want to say when I say that. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm setting up when I say that. But <laughs> from the outside looking in, um, when I look at what um, our people have endured, and I know they started off that way. I think we've crutched our own selves as a culture. Mm. Like, I think there's a lot of times we should have stepped up a long time ago, but we didn't because we didn't have the courage to. I, I, you understand what I'm doing? Because Absolutely. there's a lot of time, there's a lot of monetarily gain has come through the music industry, and you still mm. have a lot of those artists like the Anita Bakers and that, that they didn't step up they didn't even when they when they could have a lot of time they became depressed because they already had went through a lot of mental things that because i heard stories on her it's funny right. you had made her the example you know yeah <laughs> i've heard some things yeah. far as working with her and yeah. doing different things mm -hmm. i've heard these these rumors, rumors. Mm -hmm. but i've heard them and for her not to own her own masters which she's not by herself there's a right. lot of them uh but like i said i think we have to 
we have to step up. And but, like, but how do you, right? Some that, people, it's because of fear. Well, it There's, is fear. It's fear and knowledge, not knowing how to. It's definitely fear because if you look at, you look at the days of slavery, right? The purpose of the public lynching was to do what? Was to instill fear, fear, mm -hmm. fear in right. people. So don't do this or this is going to happen to yeah, you. Yeah. And so we see that within the music industry as well, is that we see these mysterious murders or the mysterious passing aways of legends you know, yeah. drug are, overdoses, drug overdoses, right? right? Drug overdoses. And when, they, when, when they finally got their masters, it happened exactly. right after as soon that. as they right. get their masters, and as soon as they that's get right. the financial freedom, mm -hmm. it's like they mysteriously pass away. So what is that? That is a public lynching, if you will, to say, okay, this can happen to you. So a lot of people stay silent. A lot of artists stay quiet. You think about. Um, uh, Sam Cooke. Yeah. Yes. We and just saw that. We just saw the documentary yeah. about Sam Cooke and how he passed. Mm -hmm. And it was oh, yeah. you we gotta check, check it out. out. Yeah. Where is that? that? Where is it on Hulu? Where I, I is it? I think it's Hulu. It's I think Hulu. it's Hulu. It is. We're going to get it. We're going to get the light. Give it up. Yeah. Yeah. Give it up. Sam give it up. Sam give it up. What's the name of it? Is it Sam Cooke? Just the Sam Cooke documentary. You look that up and you'll find it. But it's so funny because how he passed, he had some shady people, you know, that were executives that entered into his life. And so, and he was do, he was looking to make opportunities and get his own masters and create uh, opportunities for people of color in the music industry. And then he had suddenly, you know, been killed. Wow. Mm. And so I think a lot of people want to do what you're talking about, but there is that fear factor there. What? You know, I agree a hundred percent. But I also want to say it's not just in music. But I know we we're talking about music. But right. Monique. Uh, the actress yes. uh, and the comedian, comedian. Mm -hmm. she uh, felt like it was a disconnect from her, a blackballing because of yeah. her trying to get more money yeah. provided to them because and of her talking about yeah not because she was she mm -hmm. not she wasn't quiet about it and I felt I, I kind of tend to agree with her mm -hmm. in so many ways and I know already because of the people who she was connected to it was a lot of times doors being shut on her because right. of the way she responded to the way that people were, you know, coming at her about right. what she was asking for, for her self. So she wasn't self fearful. Worth. Her she self wasn't worth. fearful. Her self-worth. She, she understood. She had self-awareness and self-worth right. and she understood. But what we need in place when that happens, when you have someone like a Monique who as is assertive right. and outspoken as she is, is we need us as African Americans, we need to have people in place that have the money and the resources to be able to pull her pull in her and in say, and okay, see. they won't let you do it, but we, we have the platform that you can do that and you can say it how you want to say it. And so I I believe that we're putting ourselves in that position with knowledge. Exactly. And so it, it's going to take knowledge and it's going to take us doing it together. The, the, the thing about us as a culture, unfortunately, is we've gotten away from doing things together. It used to take the village. And so now when money came in and at the, the people at the top were dangling the carrot in front of us, it broke away that unity. It broke away that family unit where we no longer look to do it collectively together. Mm. And so now everybody's trying to come up on their own and they're finding it very difficult. But we can create those opportunities of ownership, create those opportunities for the Moniques that have something to say and that still have the skill set and the talent to make the money, then you know, then we're talking about something. Yeah, her, her talent is undeniable. Absolutely. I wouldn't see it. You can't deny her. Yeah. It ain't. You can try, but it's hard. And, and that's why I think Steve Harvey had on his show. That's why people still tend to deal with her. Right. Um, I went down there and seen Tyler Perry's layout. You know, we just come from down there. I mean, beautiful layout as far as, you know, what he's established down right. in Atlanta. You know, it's uh, it's people that are doing some things yes. that are changing the right. mode of way things always have been traditionally. Right. And, I think we need to acknowledge those wins. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Because Absolutely. there are some wins going yeah. on. Yeah. There, I mean, I'm looking at y'all. Y'all got the t-shirts on. That I that, love. That, that they you, look that, really that, nice. That's Thank you. That's the gift that we want. You know what I just said? <laughs> that's, you got, and we can put it on on yeah. here. And I, I will rock out with it. Please. Yeah, it, it, that's what, yeah, it, I should have, you should have told, I'd have put mine on today. You know what I'm saying? That's Thank what you. we messed up at. I, if I knew what was in that box, I'd have slammed it on that's right now. Good, oh, yeah, yeah, we'd have been kicking it up in there too. Do you hear me? But we're going to do it again. You know what I'm saying? That's the most important thing. The Lord say the same. Yes. You know, um, I just, hey, I, I, I 
Didn't know what to expect with you guys, yeah. but I did know God was in the midst. He's right. always yeah. in the midst. He's always in the midst. Right. But um, I want to know, what was it like working with Kirk Franklin and Erica Badu? I didn't know he worked with Erica. Wow. Yes, <laughs> this, this is what is just the fourth person that's been over here. Well, my, yeah, my sister. Um, I'm so tired of this, man. <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to get on the show? Because it's too many of her cousins keep coming through right, here. Right, right, right. I right, mean, right, you right. know, everybody come everybody through here. But you know what? got an Erica Badu but story, you know but if we don't have one. Right. But what I love about Erica is the fact that a lot of people here in Dallas have stories about yeah, they her. Got not people who live in LA right, and everywhere right. else because you have some people who live in a city and they don't mess with nobody in that city. They mess with everybody else in other cities. Right. So, but here she represents let me, let me Dallas to the full. Let, let me shout out Mr. Lambda. Is it Lambda? Yes, let me, it, Lambda. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Lambda. Let me shout out Mr. Lambda, A-I-N-G, uh, <laughs> Doug, and Artistic Visual Studios. Uh, uh, what's that Space other boy? boy? Space boy who on tour with her right now. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. tired of this man right. we're gonna have to get her in here right, yeah, right. But I, listen let's hear her. i want to hear this this is something i'm gonna tune my ear in just real it's <laughs> funny because my you know we all went to the performing arts school uh, okay Booker t and so my sister actually went to school with her I, I i came years later and right around like 97 when she dropped um here in dallas and she dropped her first album uh, baduism i was a just up and coming musician i was really kind of just learning how to play and she was doing just you know little gigs and stuff around town promoting the album and everything. And I didn't, you know, I really didn't know who she was. You know, I, I knew her name was, was buzzing and you know, everything like that. So she did a gig here in Dallas and I just kind of sat in and, 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 and winged it, you know? And so those <laughs> opportunities have come, you know, cause if you're a musician in Dallas, you've, you've played for one of the two, either Kirk or Erica. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I've, I've, I've been blessed to, you know, to, to, to sit in with those guys and sit in with those bands and just, you know, absorb what it is, you know, the energy that they bring and phenomenal talents. And I mean, we're talking. Who has more energy? You can't quantify that. You can't. Yeah, yeah. And I agree. You can't I quantify that. Hey, hey, I wouldn't say it. Yeah, because yeah I'll shut that down. I'll shut that down, man. Yeah. Yeah. Lambda, don't answer different. that. <laughs> to me, it's two different kind of energy. Kirk is so hyper. Yeah. He's yeah. so, so hyper. She's. See, she has energy, but she's more mellow. She's more mellow, yeah. yeah you know yeah. what I mean? But her yeah. vibes is just awesome. Right. Yeah. But see, you know, and it's funny about with Erica, you know, she's the same today that she was. The, the I end, believe that too. When, when I, I believe her nickname was Apples, I believe. Really? Yeah, yeah. that's right. And Apples. so, and, you know, <laughs> she originally went to like uh, Grambling and everything. And so when she was, was coming up in 97, Dallas was on point because Kirk had just dropped with God's property. Mm -hmm. And what people don't know, you know, the, the, the song Stomp was humongous. It's like one of the biggest selling yeah. gospel songs of all time. And his sister was. Yeah, my sister was in God's property. Wow. Yeah. And so, yeah, so they were touring, you know, uh, shout out to Robert C. Wright and, and, and Sean Martin, all those guys. Yeah. You know, I was a young guy. I was a young cat in, in high school, just still learning. And so I was in the middle, in the midst of, of a lot of that stuff that they were doing. And I'm just kind of sitting in the cut, absorbing, or I'd be at a rehearsal with my sister, whatever, sitting in the back. And just seeing that, how Dallas was popping musically back then. And what, what I would definitely want to say is Dallas, I love Dallas and Dallas has a great music scene, but we need to support one another in Dallas. And I say, I say that because the talent is here, the, the representation is here, but we need the unity. We don't have the unity like the Atlantas, like the Miamis, like New Yorks, and, and so forth. And that's so crazy that you said that because, to me, we have been um, dealing with a lot of <clears throat> rappers, R&B, and so forth. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about the gospel side of it, it's still the same way even oh, on the ev gospel in, in, in side? every industry. Right. Really? In every industry. I mean, I don't, I don't know a whole bunch about the gospel industry myself uh, because my background is R&B and, 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 and hip-hop. Did okay. you get out? Oh, I get down, bro. I mean, I mean, wait a minute. I, yeah, I mean, uh, you just play, what you play? Just you wasn't singing. No, I mean, I, but I. Yeah, I, but I, you I, got I, an ear for the music. Right, I play and produce anything. And that I anything. Hear. Anything that I hear. Man, come on, man. I man, I'm I enjoying this. I think you didn't this. read our Bible. No, yeah, no, you didn't I didn't. She, she did. I, no, she <laughs> I, don't, I go from the hip. It's, like I said, I didn't, grow up, I didn't grow up in church. so <laughs> I go from the hip. I thought you was coming in here right. like you were Kurt Franklin, no, 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 little brother. No. And, that's, and that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's why I go from the hip, right. because I wanted to be organic. I don't right. want <laughs> she to read it. I did it. Right. Yeah, but no, if it, we flip sometimes. That's what I'm saying. I didn't grow up in church. I didn't grow up in the gospel arena. 
So for me, all of that was new. So God, so God pulled you into that. God pulled me into this. Hey Amen. It Lord. wasn't something I went looking for. And see, and I'm gonna tell you something. Sometimes when God pulls you into something, other people that have been there before you got there don't want you there. I agree with that 100%. They don't want you there because one, you come with a different perspective, different insight, different ideas that may taint or that may conflict with what it is that they've been doing and how they've been doing it. So I wasn't readily received. You know, I wasn't received I believe like that. that. You know, a lot of things, a lot of the ideas and, and the musical ideas that I came with, even lyrically, you know, it's not for the church. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't want to talk to the church, you know, I, and there's nothing against that in those who do, who love gospel music, whatever. But I wasn't talking to them. I wanted to talk to, again, I wanted to talk to people who were hurting. I wanted to talk yeah. to people in a real sense. Like early on, I would, I would use light profanity in my lyrics because it, it was like I was... What is light profanity? You know, you well, I would say, yeah, yeah, I would yeah, say light like profanity. The D you know, word, like, you know like the D word. You know no, 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 that was profanity. <laughs> right, that was profanity. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, you know, you know, slide. Would, you want to slide? You know, I wouldn't drop. I the, use light <laughs> profanity. Yeah. Yeah. The I would drop. I would drop the F bomb. Yeah, yeah, but still, you, you know, come on, man. Just how they say it's cool to do on TV. Don't mean you gonna do it to me. Right, 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 right. No, I wouldn't drop an F bomb. You know, but I was, I had to convey it in a way that was real. And so I still do, but I don't, I don't, you know, I don't use the profanity now, but it's like, for me, I didn't, I didn't want to talk to who the gospel community was talking to mm -hmm. because they were missing a lot of the people who needed God. They needed the real message of Christ. And so I felt better doing it through R&B, through hip hop, through j smooth jazz. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's the the lane I found. I don't think nothing's wrong with that. No, absolutely Actually, not. everybody needs God. Right. That's the biggest misconception. Everybody run around acting like they got something but, figured out, but it's so free. You know, to be, hey, if you're free in the Lord, you're free indeed. You right. know what I'm saying? I, I think we try to put it in a box and box it up, but it right. never was boxed up when you look at the Word of God. When you truly read it, it's not like that. Right. But when you set up and look at the way that people profess it to be, right. religion make it out to be, right. then you get a misconception, as I said earlier, on what it really is. Right. The Word of God is, it, the God is not, the Word's not bound. It's It goes in and it taps each individual, man. When you look at the disciples, they were so different. And right. they were just normal people walking. So when we start, am I right? Absolutely. I mean, so when we look at it, it's not a thing to where you can put it in some type of little old box and say this no. is that and that's that no. and this was that. No, they, God meets you where you at. I was just going to say that. Absolutely. It's, it's, Did you? It, 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 if you look <laughs> in scripture, if you look in scripture, every time Jesus went to, when he met Peter or whatever, he found them where they were. That's right. I don't have an altar call experience where I went to church, gave my life to Christ at the altar. I don't have that. I got a strip club experience. Man, where like I'm you professed in the oh, strip well, club? I, I'm in, no, no, no. I'm, in the, I'm getting a lap dance. Yeah. Real spill. I've told my wife this. She yeah. knows. This ain't nothing, no. I'm getting a lap dance, and God is in my ear. Like, True. You know you ain't got no business being here. <laughs> no, on the cold. And I mean, God talks to me that. like that. He don't talk to me like, thou art thine son. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> thine art. No, I'm hearing God like for real, like, you know you ain't got no business being here. I've been there. You ever caught an emotion? One one time I was in South Dallas, I was Martin Luther King, and I was rolling, man. I had it going on. I had my partners with me. Right. And I see this girl, and she walking, and we on, I believe it's Martin Luther King and 175 right there. Mm -hmm. And you know where we used to go by the car wash. We'd come around by the car wash and come back up. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I seen her, and she was walking, and she was bad. I'm like, man, I got to pick her up. Mm -hmm. And I picked her up. And it was my partner. She got in with us. I'm a nice ride. Mm -hmm. We get her. You know what I'm saying? Me, my partner, and her. And uh, I'm like, yeah, man. You know, we said, where you live? So I said, we ride. You know, I take her home. Right. And I'm trying to holler at her, you know, yeah. It's about 12, 1 in the morning, maybe 2. Yeah, ain't nothing going on good at 12, right, right, 1 right. and 2. <laughs> but we are, and we get to the house, and I was like, to make a long story short, I was trying to holler at her. Right. And to make a long story short, some kind of way, God got in the car. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> he probably was already, he was already in there, bro. In that fourth seat. <laughs> right, right. And, and we all end up giving our life to Christ, rededicating wow. our life right there at wow. about three in the morning. Wow. I'm that's how God worked with that's me. I'm like works. you. I don't, it ain't like everybody else, like no. we over here at the altar. No, the altar can be wherever yes, you man. at. Think that's about right. I mean, think about Paul. Did he you hear what he, I just said? Oh, absolutely. Paul was on the road to Damascus. <laughs> 
probably up to no good. <laughs> yeah, for you're, sure. You're he's going to do what he had to no do. Good. He's going to kill some folks. And yeah. Jesus had to, had to found kill. him on his way. Yeah. Knowing you finna act bad. Yeah. And so God will, that, and I would tell the, the, the listeners who are tuning in, God will meet you where you are. Yeah. I, everybody's not going to have an at the altar church call experience. One last question for me. Okay. Um, okay. First of all, how long have you received Christ now? Uh, I'm 40 uh, since I was 24, so 16 years. Okay. And you know that once you receive him, the devil comes at you even more and more. Full force. Yeah. Okay. To your recollection, what would you say is your hardest testimony during that time? Like the thing that you had to overcome. Right. He came at you so hard. Right. And maybe you're still going through it. I don't know. No, uh, the enemy came at me when more so when my father passed. My father passed in 2005, suddenly. And it was about a year after I had met my now wife. And when he passed, I was, I needed him. I needed my dad. And he didn't tell me he was sick, but he, he, he knew he was because he had written a will months ahead. And I was angry, not just at him, but I was angry at God. And the reason why I was so angry at God because I felt like I had, even up to that point, I was living a life for him. I said, God, I don't do, I don't do any foul music. I don't, you know, I don't put my hand, you know, I don't drink, I don't smoke like that, blah, blah, blah. You know, I did, I did stuff, but I was like, you know, I felt like, God, I you know I live my life for you. Why would you take my dad? I need my dad. And so I walked around with this anger and this bitterness, still serving God, but angry. Still helping people. <coughs> angry you know trying to be a boyfriend to her at the time angry right and so that was my toughest battle um was getting getting rid of the anger and the bitterness that i had toward god you don't know no anger until you're angry at god <coughs> and the fact that he allowed me to be showed me his love even the more. That's why I don't play with him because he could have easily took me out for being angry at him. Mm -hmm. But he allowed me to heal and he sent people in my life. He sent my wife in my, into my life so that I could heal. And it was a process. It took time and I allowed it to take time. Mm -hmm. So I think that's been the biggest challenge for, for, for me. I want to hear your story. Okay. Now we did we finish yours? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he gave a good spiel. Yes, he We're did. We're gonna go right back into it. So, so when I cut him off, he gonna say something dramatic. Bam, <laughs> and then I'm gonna go to her. <laughs> <laughs> no, but now you guys are brilliant in the fact that you've been together this long. It's been twenty years. Close to it. Close yeah, you said it. she was eight. Now, I remember. I ain't forgot nothing. Now I'm yes, old. she was eight. Yeah, you know what when I'm saying. I, when so, she was almost nine years almost, old. And you see when y'all mm -hmm. met, but then yeah. you right, say right. y'all counting toward the. Well, we didn't get married till 2014. Okay, so y'all waited, but y'all knew each other and had yes. you know had been in a relationship. Right. right. Go ahead and talk. Talk that talk. Go ahead. Hmm. I think, um, like my husband said earlier, for me. The anger came for me is when I saw my daughter have, having to go through the divorce and the, the separation. How long have you accept, accepted Christ at, in oh, your life? Oh, gosh. Like, really. I'm not talking as a kid because I know that no. you were raised in the church right. and did all of that. I'm talking about because you can be in a church and then you... As an adult teenager, you go through right. your thing, and then and let me just you say, re, yeah, you you didn't you, you wasn't reading it. like that. You right. weren't even. I'm talking. You found him for your, yourself. Found him for myself. Who he was right. really. I was in my thirties. Yeah, you gave I was your, in my mid thirties. Almost, I would say about thirty two. 32 okay. years old, wow. um, for, that I found them for myself. No, I get it. Yeah. And so I'm talking about trials after that, because once you find that right. real knowledge about him, mm -hmm. that's when the devil come at you even worse. Absolutely. Right. And, and again, with, with my marriage, my, my divorce and all of that, when I, you know, was first married, to watch my daughter go through that, 
I was angry with that because I said, well, God, you know, I did the best I could. I tried. You know, I wanted to be married. I wanted my family and and to see him do what he wanted to do and step out and 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 cheat and had no regard regard for me, you know. Uh, had no regard for our daughter as far as just uh, wanting to be out out in the streets. And I went through that period of anger, of frustration, of of feeling defeated, depression. So we all have our, you know, go-throughs. I mean, yeah, you, of course, you know, when you accept Christ, then, you know, everything seems like, you know, the enemy is at you from the left, the right, the side, the back, and everything else. But uh, because, again, I kept praying through it. I you found Christ in the middle of your marriage. Yes. Because you, cause that was during the time that you were married when you first right. married. Right, yes. And at that time, your husband hadn't found Christ, or was he in Christ? He was. He was in Christ He denounced him. He, he's okay. totally atheist now. Wow. Yeah. And it, the funny thing is, his mom was my spiritual, spiritual mom. Wow. She, you know, we still, we still talk and everything like that, but he grew up in the church. But he grew up kind of seeing the same things that my husband now saw. You know, uh, mom getting hit on in the church and, you know, the ministers and, and all those type of things that were happening that he didn't like. So when his father passed, he and his father wasn't in his life. He would started to see, well, God, where were you at? You know, mm-hmm. where were you at in my life? You know, you let my mother go through all of this. You let me go through all this. I have my dad. My stepfather was there, but then you took him. He died. You know, and his step his stepfather went was in Vietnam. So he died, you know, of cancer, Agent Orange in his body. And so he was angry. So he's totally now denounced God because he said God wasn't there for him. So it's just, you know, for me, I, I held on to it because... I had praying parents and grandparents. You know, my grandmother died in 2005. She was 109 years old. Wow. My mother's mother. And she prayed for us. Her ki- her kids and her grandkids, her great-grandkids and all on and on. We six generations. My grandmother had 100 grandkids. Her and her husband. And my dad and um, uh, my dad's parents were married. They were 95 and 99 when they passed. I want to interject something because sure. when we went to a funeral yesterday, mm-hmm. and I just never thought about it like this. Um, Ricky Rush was, you know, um, preaching. Shout out to Ricky Rush and at the Inspiring Body of Christ. He so. said, you know, he was talking about the same thing. Like yes. a lot of people always ask in time of devastation, where were you, God, when I was going through this? You know, loss of a sister, brother, mm-hmm. aunt, right. uncle, mom, dad, all of that. And he said, well, God said, I was the same place I was there when my son was being killed. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I'm like, I never thought about it yeah, that absolutely. way. Absolutely. You know what I mean? God doesn't leave us. We leave him. Everything is there for a right. reason. Just like what I said, everything happens for a right. reason. Right, right. And how I look on life, even before he said that, I always would say, we're here for a job. When we're born, That's we clock right. in at this job <laughs> called world. <laughs> yes. And we come here and we do our job. When our job is over, no, and each time we get a job, there's no length of time on that job. Mm-hmm. You can either finish it tomorrow. That's why some kids are only here for a day. Right. Some kids are only, you know, here for the nine months or three months. You right. know, you don't know. Right. Their job is done. Right. And yes, some of them might not have been birthed, Correct. but they've touched people's lives. Absolutely. Right. Whether the mother, the nurse, the boyfriend, the husband, somebody's life is being touched by that child. Absolutely. By anybody. So that their their job is complete. Right. And that's how I look on life. So whenever someone goes, I look at their job here is done. I still have work to do. That's mm-hmm. the reason why I'm still here. That's so right. I need to turn around and do my job. Absolutely. Yes, we're human beings and we're going to be sad and mourn and all of that. But you need to re- rejoice. We need to rejoice right. that you know, their job is done and God is ready for them and he's taking them to be by his side. Right. Right. Like the Bible says, we we that are in Christ, we don't mourn as the world mourns, mm-hmm. you know, because God says he's gone to do what? Prepare a place for us. Exactly. Uh-oh. So where he goes with that place, right. there he said then, there will you be with me. So you're right. We don't mourn like the world mourns. There, we all have a responsibility. God put us all here at, to do a job. And... 
you know, the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to choose the one to do what you guys do, what we do. Mm -hmm. You have to choose it. And if you don't choose it. Man, you guys are dope, man. I just always you know. like, I like to see that God is working in your life like he is in mine. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's the way. Uh, um, that's the way Paul was. He said he seen that he had gave the you know the ministry to the Gentiles to me like he had gave the ministry to Peter and them for the Jews. Right. You know, and they could they was having a good time about that. Right. You know, right. and I think I think that's what we got to have a good time about is yes. when God is working in your life and He yeah. working in my life because He's big enough for the job. And yes. it, what I, what I love about you guys is you do it with your flavor. Yeah. 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 When you the, the moment you try to do it like first lady and pastor, you just lost. <laughs> you lost. Mm -hmm. You just lost. We, and, and you I, can't make this up. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and so I, I would tell you know the, the people watching and listening, when God calls you, He calls you as you are. As you are. With your, your flavor, uniqueness. with your uniqueness, right. your personality. Now He'll shape you. Oh, right. Yeah. If you got a little bit of anger, a little bit of, you know, whatever, he'll, 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 he'll use it, but he'll shape it. And you got to give him time to, mm. right? You think, everybody thinks, oh, I got to get, I got to get myself together. You can't get yourself together. No, you can't. You have to submit yourself to him and to his way and to his will. But use, he'll use your flavor. The earrings ain't coming out. The hair's still straight. <laughs> I still got my flavor. I still got my ear. I'm, I'm do, I do Landa, right? right? Yeah. And if people don't feel it, they don't they don't rock with it. Okay, then they don't. I'm not it talking to them. them. It, it ain't, ain't for it. them. That's you know, right. That's I'm still right. Atlanta from Oak Cliff. Right. My wife is still Roe from East Texas. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Right. And so we gonna continue to be. And, there, and there's some people in church that might not get with that, and that's fine. You be you. The way God called you, God. When, how God called Paul. Paul was very, um, very learned. He was very knowledgeable Taught of different cultures of Gamaliel. Right. Right. And so. Right. The reason why he can go to Rome and Peter can't is because Paul is, 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 is knowledgeable about different cultures. He knows how to talk to the Romans. You don't go to Rome talking Chinese. That's right. You have to be able to speak the language of the people, right? So from wherever you're from, East Texas, Oak Cliff, South Dallas, wherever you're from, your, God will use the way that you talk and your flavor to be able to pull in others that understand where you're coming exactly. from. That's but right. the minute you go there talking about, what's up, Bishop? What's up, Doc? How you doing, Doc? <laughs> yeah. I'm, and, and you speaking in tongues, ordering sandwiches. You're not even. You're not even real with it. <laughs> and people can see through that. God has called you the way that you are with your flavor, with your style, with your swag, with your drip, whatever. That's how God has called you to do it. He let him do the shaping because he will. He will do it. It is so important to do it that way. And it is. And if, if you don't, right. then you, 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 like you say, you lost you lose all the a lot, right. lot of people. Right. Go ahead. And I, I was instrumental. And my husband tried to change oh, yeah. throughout the time we were together and dating. And then we got married. He wanted to take the earrings out and he wanted to take the long hair and, 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 and the bell bottoms. And because he's an artist and he was trying to change that. I said, you forgot your ear earrings. I said, yeah. oh, OK, <laughs> don't forget that. You know, all of the flavor, the, the, the I mean, when I met him, it's he looked like that Prince. you fell in love with. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he looked like Prince to me. I mean, yeah. Lenny Kravitz and Prince, the chokers, the all of that said. No, this is what I meant. I didn't ask you to change. Well, here's the, here's the thing you got to realize, man. God doesn't look at the exterior. He looks at the heart. He looks at the heart. So right. when you look at the way God deals with his children, right. he, he, he went, you know, the, the people picked Saul in the Old Covenant. Yes. And he picked David because right. David was Come a man on. after we, his own heart. We yeah. just studied You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So yes. you got to understand when God chooses he looks at it differently than us. Right. Okay. You know what I mean? Right. So we can't get caught up. You was exactly right. right. You know, and, and, and I've seen pre people who tell people, well, you're going to come here and you're going to join this church. You got to take the earrings out mm -hmm. and you got to do this. And, you gotta, and they start telling them this stuff because of the way that they feel God receives people. Right. But that ain't the way God, God no. tell you fearfully and wonderfully made. Right. Yes. You, between right. you and him. Yes. Right. He said you fearfully and wonderfully made. When that's I read right. that scripture, that's for me. Right. That's right. And right. he met me where I was See, at. That's one thing we always say. If somebody says something, it's like, okay, show me in the Bible where it oh, says yeah, that. Right. right. And see, yeah, that was some of the, that was, Something. You know, after I got saved, that was some of the pitfalls I went through, like my wife touched on, because mm -hmm. I was, I was, I already wasn't accepted in the secular, in the world, mm -hmm. right? Because I was different. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. she said, I was, you know, I, I grew up a musician, Lenny Kravitz, Prince, you know, that's, that's, that's who I rock with, right? 
So I was already ostracized by the world and, and, and that. And then I get in the church and it's like, okay, here's you know, the devil reincarnated, right? <laughs> right. Well, I'm coming in with the hair and the, and the earrings and the jewelry and all this stuff. But I did that on purpose because I knew who I was. And I, like I said, I had a strong father. I had a strong father that affirmed to me. I knew I wasn't gay. Oh man, you fruity looking da 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 I knew who I was. I love nothing but women, I always have. But the thing of it is, is that I had that, I had that father figure, I had that backbone that instilled in me, this is who you are and you're different and God has called you to be that way. And when you, can, when you have that comfort to walk in your own skin, you can worship in your own skin, you can worship, how, you can worship in freedom. Where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. Listen, I love man. the way how you say that because- no, That's, that's exactly who we are. Because, yeah. no, but what I'm talking about as a child, when you're going through all that bullying and everything and you come back to your father and say these things and your father say to you, well, you're different. Right. But then you have to turn around with your father, not by your side when you go back to school right. and get those <laughs> bullying and have to deal with that every day right. and still overcome that. I'm going to tell you something, though. I'm going to tell you with that. You do have to go through it. You do have to overcome it. But to develop strength, it doesn't come in a day. When you go into a, a, to a gym to work out, to build endurance, you don't get it in one workout. So God had me facing opposition early as a kid. So I would have the strength that I have today as a 40 year old. So ignorance ain't going nowhere. So people are just as ignorant today, if not more so, and more brash about it and more outspoken about it than they were when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So now that when I'm in business and me and my wife are traveling the world, from Egypt to Africa, to Europe, to Asia, whatever, and we're still getting that ignorance and we're still getting that angst from people, I know how to deal with it now because I was able to deal with it at 10, at 15, at 20. I can deal with it at 40. Well, what you say to me today, don't phase me because I know who I am in Christ. If I know who I am in him and then my wife dig it, then you can't tell me nothing, nothing about me. If my wife love it, when I take this, 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 this hair down and this hidden past my, my, my shoulder, <laughs> if she dig it, if she want it, then it's all for her. Hey, man. If, <laughs> hey, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Absolutely. Go. When God tell you it's, 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 it's good between you and him, it's already it's done. It's already done. It's yeah. done. You know, you, that's the, I love the fact that he, he loves us where we are. Yes. I keep going back to that. Yes. It don't matter what nobody thinks, man. Yeah. And, and that's the part where everybody tried to make it up to be something so they could use it as a, a mechanism to control people. Right. That, that's what they were doing. That's what they still do today. Mm -hmm. People would have you believe that you have to go through a man to get to God. Right. This right. is what people do to try yeah. to figure out a way to sure keep will. this same uh, posture up that was, you know, poor pit is on only one place in the Bible. It's only mentioned in uh, the book of Nehemiah. Mm -hmm. and people wouldn't even know that if they didn't study. Mm -hmm. So you gotta be studied up and understand that, okay, when I say that, I'm not down talking nothing. I'm just I, telling I, you that God is God no matter what, no yes. matter where you're at. Yes. It don't matter where you at. You right here, he right here. Mm -hmm. Say what well, two or more gather there, I shall be in the midst. Right. So Absolutely. I don't go by what people, if it's not the word, you know, if it's not, if you haven't studied to show thyself approved, a workman that then need not be ashamed, right. then you should be ashamed right. of yourself. Right. Because, right. <laughs> that's right. That's because, right. because, because you have to understand you should be studying. That's, right. that's each and every individual that's that say right. they believe in God. That's it. Quit acting like it's somebody else's uh, uh, job for, to, to study for you. You right. need to study. Right. You got to pick it up. And I love what you said at the beginning of the show. You said, that we have no excuse now. You can go to Google, you can go to videos, you can go to YouTube, yeah. and you can find the truth, the mm -hmm. truth for yourself. You ain't got to go watch 100 you know, preachers or whatever, but you can find the truth for yourself. And my, my wife will tell you, you know, and a lot of uh, Christians will be like, no, nah, I don't listen to no, no Louis Farrakhan. There are bits and pieces and nuggets that I will pull from what mm -hmm. he says. I don't have to agree with everything. I don't agree with everything that maybe Bishop Jakes says or uh, right. Pastor Ricky Russ says, but I'm able to pull and discern, mm -hmm. number one, and then pull mm -hmm. those bits and pieces that I need that fuel me. Mm -hmm. And then I can take that and put that towards scripture and say, okay, let's, let's, Let's beat it up against. I want you to keep doing. You have to read the scripture. I want you to right. You can't listen to it. I want you to keep doing that. Yes, I do the same thing. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. You got to go and 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 it's not just that. Anything Hindu Buddhism. Yes. I'm telling you, I, I had to, when I studied all of that stuff, Nawa Buddhism, whatever I studied, mm -hmm. even uh, the the what they call them the the, the Masons, all mm -hmm. that. I, mm -hmm. It all it's all out there. Right, right. 
right. But right. listen, man, everything I studied brought me closer to Christ. Yes. I'm being real. For yeah. me. For me I can't too. speak for everybody else, mm -hmm. but I studied the Jehovah Witness, all 144,000 of them that's going to make mm -hmm. it in. Right. And the angel Michael <laughs> being Jesus as well. I right. studied all that, the Mormonism, right. all that. But I just steadily fell in love with Christ mm -hmm. yes. because the scriptures were standing true. It stood strong in the midst of everything I studied. Right. And I tell everybody that a lot of people, they don't know the canosity of the scripture. When I say that, they didn't. They say, well, you know, the Bible been changed. Okay, well, go find the scrolls that was done before it changed. Right. Right. You can go to the scrolls. You can right. go research this right. stuff. Right. Before it went from Hebrew, before it went from Greek, mm. right. before you was, you know, the Aramic, mm. all that, you can, Aramic or whatever, you can mm. go and study it before if you want to learn the language. Right. Quit trying to make excuses right. and quit trying to talk down on the Bible. Yeah, King James might have been gay. Right. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But in sixteen the 1600s, he sent seven uh, groups of men out, three for the Old Testament, two for the New Testament, mm -hmm. one for the apocryphal period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. go study. Don't right. Come back with something else, man. Right. Quit playing There's with no me. Because at the end of the day, you can go research right. and get that information. Right. But don't come to me like no cabbage I'll hit nobody <laughs> you got to come real you right, understand right, what I mean you right. need to be doing some studying and people need right. to know like did you hear what I just said they're yeah, not absolutely. studying they're not bro studying. and Christianity is not the white man's religion people need to understand and I and I say this and I probably get into a little bit of trouble nah let's go okay <laughs> my wife and I just came back from Egypt right okay and when you put your hands on those columns that men built what no they try to give credit to aliens men built them columns right the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, I believe it's Isaiah 19, that, and God loved Egypt. Yes, he did. He loved Egypt. He loved Egypt. So we yeah. think of as Egypt as an enemy of God. No, God loves Egypt too. He loves of Israel. Of them. He loves everybody, right? So when I look at scripture and I have to study it, you look at the world map and where Egypt is and where Israel is. What we know today as the Middle East, they weren't calling the Middle That's East right. in the biblical That's times. That's correct. There was no Middle East. That's correct. It was Asia, Africa, and Rome, Italy, You know, the, which was one of the world powers at that time. But there was no Middle East. That's correct. It was all Africa. That's correct. And people need to understand that. And when we, under, when we get an understanding of that as black people, not only did civilization start where we're from in Africa, mm -hmm but the world religions mm. are based out of Africa. And it's one big piece of land that's separated by the Suez Canal or you know near the Red Sea. That's all it is. I, already, I definitely get it, brother. It's Africa. Mm -hmm. I and I will it. tell our people, it's not a white man's religion. The white man, ha the, you know, uh, has it's tainted it. It's yeah, and stuff. They have but tainted it, but it's your, you have the opportunity now to research it. If you ain't feeling King James, go find, like you said, find the original. Yeah, find the Bishop Bible. Yeah. Find the Matthews Bible. Y'all got to do your research. Yeah. I'm not here to tell you what to do, and I'm not right. trying to tell you you got to do it the way I do it. Right. But I'm telling you, if you're going to speak about it, then get it together. Right. Understand right. what you're talking about. Exactly. So many people speak, but they don't, they're they ignorant. Right. The Bible says it like this. It says, you do err because you know not the scripture mm -hmm. when he was talking to the Sadducees. Mm -hmm. You know, right. you don't want to err. Right. You know? yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I can go there. Right. Already. But I thank God for the word, man. I thank, yes. I thank God for you guys. Thank I thank you. God for y'all coming. Uh, we'd thank like to you. end in prayer. Awesome. Yeah, I get down over here. Okay. Yeah, we'll pray. Oh, we'll yeah. we'll turn to you from Linden. Can you pray? What? Oh, pray. <laughs> pray us out of here. Father God, we thank you right now yes. for who you are, Father. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity, Father, to come before you, Father, before your throne. Ancient of days, you've been so good to us. Yes, Lord. You've been glorious. You've been kind. God, we give you honor and glory. God, what we do, Father, is for your glory and for your purpose, God. God, we thank you, God, that you placed us in your in this world, God, to do the things, oh, Father, that you have us to do, God. God, we will do it, oh, God. No matter matter what it looks like, God, no matter what people say, Father, we will, oh God, do your work and do your will on this Thank earth, God. Jesus. God, bless this, oh God, radio station. Bless, oh God, the, you, the man and woman, oh God, that owns this, oh God. Thank God, you. we ask you, oh God, to continue to, to bless Boss Talk 101, oh God. Thank bless you, every person that comes in, God. God, I pray, oh God, that when they come in the door, Father, Thank that, you, oh God, your spirit hit them, oh God, Jesus. and that they know, oh God, that these, oh 
oh God, people are your, oh God, children, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, let it go around the world, God. Let yes. someone see it, oh God, and say, oh my God, I need to invest in this. I need to do, oh God, those things, oh God, that you're calling me to do, Father. Father, we just thank you, God, for their family, God. Thank you for what you're doing in them and through them, and God, thank you, oh God, for who you are in their lives, God. Continue to show yourself strong, Father. Oh God, bless them in every area, oh God. Everything they need, God, is already been given, God, because they, oh God, lean and depend on you. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory, for it's in Jesus' name we give you praise. Amen. 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 Say, man, I see why you married a baby. Yeah, man. Thank you, Jesus, man. Hey, man. You know what's the funny thing? What's that? When you talking, you so soft. But when, when you come to God, God, oh man, that she, voice she said, I'm getting mouth. naked for the Lord. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, thank you so much See, for coming on our that platform. Voice. Man, you. God oh, is so God. good, man. So good. Hey, man, it's hey, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. It's been Most another great so segment much. of Boss Talk 101. And we out.